you got the Battle of Trafalgar, or Trafalgar. It's pronounced either way, depending on what country you're from. Uh, the British reported seeing three, at least three, of the Spanish ships that were black, painted black. So um, they were not characteristically painted with the, the yellow, ochre yellow sides. They weren't painted red like the Tr Santissima Trinidad was. They were black. So today we're going to talk about Spain's black ships and how you can include them in your fleet. There are some specific ships that are named, and there may be a couple others that weren't. So stick around, and we'll get dive into this project. Alright, so welcome to today's episode, uh, kind of a sort of how-to video. So what is it about these black ships and why did the British report Spanish ships that were black during the, that battle, Battle of Trafalgar? It's 1805. Uh, well, before we start going to why and what's going on, let me just stress that this particular uh, topic can apply whether you're painting your Spanish fleet according to the warlord recommendations of using, you know, red sides, or whether you're doing the more historical, historically accurate approach by using mostly yellows, various shades of yellows uh, for your hull sides. This is a way to add some variety to your fleet. But why were they black? Well, to understand, you got to get a little bit of context. Here, obviously, is 1805, and the Spanish Empire definitely wasn't what it used to be. Uh, it had been through several wars with Spain, oh, sorry, it's, uh, Spain, it is Spain, uh, several wars with Britain or France, switching sides sometimes. They fought with the British, French against the British, they fought with the British against the uh, French, and they fought the British. So I mean, it just, it, it was crazy. Of course, when you go to war, it drains your economy. On top of that, the, you know, Spain was suffering from the effects of a couple different uh, epidemics at the time, and so their economy was hurting, and their population was still recovering. They really did not have the funds required to maintain a fleet. One of the things you have to maintain in your, in your fleet is the paint on your ships. Now, paint is not just to make it look good, it protects the ship, the wood. Uh, you can varnish it, you can paint it, you can stain it, there's all different things you can do. And the British, sorry, the Spanish uh, regulations for the Navy had indicated that the ships of the fleet needed to be repainted every two years. Well, when you're short on funds and you're even having trouble paying your cap, your officers, let alone your seamen, uh, you're probably not going to be paying for maintenance to paint your ships. Now. Ships, you know, they, they gotta do kind of need to look good because, in a certain sense, there's a pride of your fleet, and you want to put your best foot forward when it comes to you know being on the stage of the world, the world stage when you're dealing with whether it's warfare, sailing to uh, friendly or opposed, near opposing forts, or sorry, ports. Um, but you know they just couldn't afford it. Some captains in the Spanish fleet actually paid out of pocket their own money to repaint their own ships. So, now we understand kind of the context. Now, let's, what's been going on here? Well, some of these ships had been put into uh, dry dock for repairs and refurbishing, rearmament, and would require a repaint as well, and that's the time to do it. Well, unfortunately, they may not have been finished in time. They actually were, set, were needed in battle, so let's get them out there now. I know it's not painted, but let's go. So what was really happening is these ships had been heavily weathered and faded, the yellow paint had faded to, or peeled off to such an extent that it was hard to tell if they even had any yellow paint at a distance. So what we're talking about here are black ships aren't really just painted black. They're actually ships that are in need of a little bit of love and attention from the painter's brush. Now we can actually model these very effectively. Uh, there are actually three ships that are specifically mentioned, and to be honest, you could probably add a couple others. Uh, entirely up to you, it's your fleet, right? So let's talk about the ships specifically. Okay, now the British reported three specific ships. The first rate, Santa Ana, 
the, in the two third rates, San Telmo and San Justo. Now, what's kind of interesting is when you actually get the Spanish Ships of Renown box, one of the ships is the San Justo. So, hey, you might as well, right? So instead of painting this one red like it shows in the box, let's paint it black. And today we're going to kind of walk through how do you do that. Okay. So, to start with, we need to know a little bit about the ship's history, and we need to actually build the ship, and I'm going to call it properly. Of course, you're free to build it any way you want. It's your ship. But if you want to be a little most, more historically correct, let's talk about the San Justo specifically because that's the one that's actually in the kit. Now, these three ships were all built prior to 1793. And what's the big deal about that, dear? Well, as of September 10th, uh, 8, 1793, the Spanish crown set out uh, the requirements or regulations for the building of ships, and at that point, September 10th forward, ships were permitted, finally, to include a figurehead that was uh, more along the, you know, something to do, re more representative of the name of the ship. So, 1793 and earlier, sorry, September 10th, 1793, or 1793, and prior, there was a one figurehead the ships were allowed to carry, and that was the Royal Lion. Now, fortunately for us, there's a version of that in the third grade kit. So let's do this. Let's take a look at how do you build the kit, the San Justo, or San Talmo, and then we'll talk about how do you go ahead and paint it to represent one of these black ships. All right, so let's go down to the table. All right, so here is the picture on the box of the San Justo. And what's in this kit, it's kind of neat. You get obviously three sprues for th of third rates. And the detail parts, the metal detail parts, for both the stern and the figurehead for each of the three ships. The Monarca, Argonauta, and the San Justo. Well, the San Justo, actually, <laughs> I don't know what Warlord was thinking, uh, but if you can see, we're going to go ahead and zoom in here, see how well we can zoom this. The actual image on the box shows this very strange lantern head look to the San Justo. That's not quite right because again the San Justo was built before September 10th and launched before September 10th 1793. Now the other two ships, Marco and Argonauta, yeah they were after that so they could have figureheads that matched their name. But not the San Justo. So, let's take a quick look at the sprue, and let's see what we're going to need to do to make this ship and the Santelmo. So, obviously, it's your third-rate sprue. Uh, it's, it's all the parts you're normally going to need. What we're going to do here is we're going to focus on the actual figureheads, though. And let's, I don't know how well this is going to focus, but if you take a look, the very top one on the sprue is actually the royal Spanish royal lion. Uh, it actually has a crown. Not all of them did have a crown, but here in this particular version it is. It does. Right, so that top figurehead is the one you're going to use on the San Justo. Alright, so first step, cut the parts out, and you're going to do a partial assembly. Let's take a look, because what you're going to do is you're going to build parts of it, and then you're going to prime. And let's take a look at what that looks like. All right, so here are the parts of the ship. I have taken the two sides, two halves of the hull, and put the the four to forecast focal uh, sort of. I, I don't know. I honestly forget what part of the ship that's called. But took that, assembled that, and glued it together. And then I put in the figurehead of the Spanish Royal Lion. That's one sub-assembly. Have the deck separate. Do not glue on the below deck portion here. I'll show you why in a second. And then here's the San Justo's rear, uh, base of the stern. Okay. And this is real. You know, this is real, very well designed. This just literally fits on over the back. It's hard to. It fits real nice. You, you can actually keep this off for now. All right, first thing you do is you prime the top and the insides uh, gray, as well as the deck gray, because you want to use some sort of light tan beige kind of a color. 
and if you're painting it on black, it's harder to let the, you might need a few more coats. So just go with gray and you're good to go. You can actually go with gray. If you have a white primer, you can actually paint the stern white as well. But I happen to like the way gray looks. Uh, so I just paint primed to gray. Once that's done, now you want to prime the rest of the hull black. Now, you want to protect this part. So what I do is I take a piece of foam. Uh, this comes from a, one of those pick and pluck, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, you know, miniature trays. And you can actually squeeze that and put that right here. That protects this area from any overspray. Okay, so matter of fact, if you want, you can actually see how it has that gap there. You can put the figurehead in that um, and then let it sit closer to that section. Okay, this keeps the spray off of it. Now, then just prime it black, both sides fully, and then you're good to go. Okay. It's okay if you get a little bit over the insides. You're, it's not going to be a big different, a big deal, because in this area you're going to actually be painting that uh, sort of a reddish brown. All right. So once you've got the pieces primed, now you're on to the next step. Let's cover that. Yes. Actually, I should have mentioned that you should also prime this black. This is the section that goes underneath the uh, center of the, the ship. You'll see why as, as I uh, go through this. All right, so here's a couple of the colors to give you an idea. Ships at the time were painted a wide variety of, or, yeah, colors. Paint, paint was not standardized like it was is nowadays. So you can't go to, you know, <laughs> they couldn't go to Home Depot or their local DIY store and pick up the can of paint that has the exact color they want and just order gallons and gallons and gallons of it. Instead it was a little, lot less precise. And so, as long as you're in the ballpark, you're good. So I'm gonna give you some examples. And of course, you can use Delta craft paints. You can use uh, American Heritage cards. There's, you don't have to be Vallejo. Uh, matter of fact, a lot of mine, I do use some of the craft paints that for, you know, especially for the uh, stained wood look. And that's for the uh, kind of a reddish brown, right? Clay looking, if you will. Um, but you can use a uh, hull red. It's basically German uh, camel color. Or flat brown. Both of those will work real well. For the decks, you know, do what you want. You can even mix colors. Uh, I typically use uh, brown beige and mix it with a little bit of uh, Iraqi sand or dark sand. Uh, or even just go ahead and use Iraqi sand. Uh, that's a pretty good color, I think, for a, a deck. Do what you want and make it look good. So I'm not going to, you know, actually show myself painting everything, but I do want to cut touch one part. So let's do that right now. Uh, so I've chosen to go with flat brown just because it's a nice, rich, reddish color. I'm going to go put a little bit on a palette here. It doesn't take much. And now here's the key. The inside of the gunnels, that's the area above the deck on the side of the ship here, that's going to be this color. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint that along the entire length You don't have to be too neat because you're going to be doing a lot more work besides this, right? Uh, and you're going to eventually go over with it and touch up the top with black eventually. So again, it doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, you know, you don't, don't have to be between the lines. You definitely need to do these. Uh, this section here should be canvas, but I'm just giving it a base coat of this brown. Continue forward. And then do the other side. Very, very, very straightforward. Okay? So, finish that and I'll get back to the next step. Okay, so, next after doing that, I went through and started working on the deck. I just used Iraqi sand, and I painted this triangular area up here, Iraqi sand, and most of this. I did leave some areas still, you know, unpainted. And I'll explain why in just a second. Uh, now you could do the deck first and then go do the gunnels uh, because you're going to use the same color paint that you used on the gunnels on the, this, the rest of the deck details. And I'll, I'll show you that next. So, once this is dried, uh, you're going to go back and use the same color that you used on the gunnels on 
all of the gun carriages, as well as all of these small detail sections. Uh, let's kind of zoom in here and I'll show you which what I'm kind of speaking of here. So essentially the woodwork. So these areas here, right behind the mast, these hatches, this this area here, all of these, sh and in this railing here, including the entire face of it, and this back part, that should be also in that stained wood. Uh, so you can use the that same. I'm going to use the same flat brown. Now this front section, that can be. Uh, this definitely going to be. It's going to be black up here, but you can do black up the, the entire front if you want. Uh, it could also be that brown, but the ends over here are black. So again, do what looks good to you, okay? Once you're done with that, then you can go back and you can paint the cannons themselves with black. So let's go ahead and I'll show you what that looks like. All right. Quick paint job. It didn't take too long. Uh, all right, so that's kind of what the it looks like on the deck. Cannons finished. Woodwork done. It's all done. Um, now I'm not going to do any washes right yet. That that'll come later. And there's the dark brown and the inside gunnels. And I went ahead and I painted the lion a uh, bright gold. Okay, nice and gilded. All right, that's as far as you want to go at this point. All right. The next step is you're going to want to assemble the ship. You're going to basically put her together, right? So. Just snap these parts together. The front here actually starts ahead, it comes in in front of, and then you snap it the rest of the way down. All the way back, okay? And you can see you have access to the bottom. You can run your glue along those to seal it in there. Okay? And there you go. That's all you need to do as far as assembly. Leave the stern off for now. That way you can detail the stern later as you see fit. Now we're ready to actually do the next step, which is actually the yellow sides. Let me show you what we're going for. Now, before I go there, let's talk. The front here, we're not going to wash. We're not going to do the uh, raised highlights here. Uh, usually it's in white or yellow. Back here, we're not going to do the glass and the uh, the rest of the uh, poop deck area here below deck. We're not going to do that yet because, again, we don't want to mess up the paint job with what we're about to do. Let me show you on the, my Santa Ana what we're going for, and then we'll go ahead and show you. I'll show you how to do it here. Okay, okay. here is my Santa Ana. Now, this is the uh, metal version so some of the rigging has been kind of bent as a result but it's very very subtle you can't, it's kind of hard to see but let's go ahead and we're going to get the angle on this a little different so that you'll have a better chance of seeing it and then we're going to zoom in okay because this is a black looking ship but as you zoom in now you can start to see Wait, there's traces of yellow. See there, in the front and near the stern. Okay, so that's the faded yellow paint that we're looking at, looking for. And it's apparent in the light, and even you know I can see it more clearly off the video than I can on the video, to be honest with you. But you can still see. I'll tilt it a little bit more. You can see the yellow standing out. See, it's it's there. It's just not prominent. And three feet away, when it's sitting there on a tail tabletop, you know, it looks like a black ship. In fact, to be honest with you, I often mistake this for the Santissima Trinidad because from this distance, when you when the light hits the uh, porthole covers certain way it actually looks a little bit reddish that's what we're going for so let's do a, a quick run through how you do this because we're going to do that on this ship 
right. Very first thing is you got to pick your yellow. Now, like I said before, paint was not standardized back in the day. You you couldn't ensure that you're going to have enough paint of exactly the same yellow to paint your whole fleet. There's going to be some differing yellows, with even within the fleet. So don't get too hung up on which yellow. However, I would recommend you avoid the bright yellows because that really wasn't easy to come by uh, back in the day, especially for the Spanish fleet. But what I like to use is ochre brown. It's a, a, a darker yellow, okay? And personally, I think it looks right, and that's what you want to go with. Look, Go for what looks right to you. I'm not the one to you know tell you what's the right color. Uh, I just think this one looks really well. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get some water on your palette. I use the back of the Warlord uh, packets. Uh, I, I, you know, a lot of game systems have those you know, little clamshell type boxes and you can cut the back lid off and it's a great palette. So the first thing you're going to do is get some water on the palette. Now I find the easiest way to do this is to get a, you know, make sure you have a clean cup or you know you, you can use your paint cup just empty out the water rinse it out till it's clean you know coming out clear then just use your a clean brush don't you know you shouldn't already have paint on it dump it in and just start to apply it if you have a water dropper that's good too just get get a few drops of paint and you can use or not sorry not paint water you can even use a larger brush to get more of it on there. Whoops, that actually brought a lot of water back on. You can't have too much water on the palette. Okay, so get it in the corner. There's the, here I'll go ahead and, here's the stern plate. And you can see the amount of water in, the, in there is about the same size as the stern plate. Okay, so that's how much I'm going to start with. Now, here's the fun part. I'm going to take the ochre brown and I'm going to put a drop over here, not in the water, next to the water. Like that. Just a very little drop. Because now we're going to want to kind of mix them together. And here's where we're going to use the brush you're going to paint with. It doesn't need to be really fine or beautiful okay this is you're trying to go for a faded effect so pristine is probably not what you want to go for here so I'm gonna go with kind of a, a medium sized brush tip and I'm going to take the water and I'm gonna move it up to the paint there we go and now so you can see the paint is starting to bleed into the water and that's exactly what we want because we want some of that yellow there, but we want it very thin. Now, this is extremely important. You want more water than you have paint and a lot more water because with this, you're trying to build up layers of yellow. And the more layers you build, the more opaque the color gets so you can stop at any point. But it's very, very difficult to remove paint if you put too much on. So start mixing it in until it comes off on the on a, uh, like a paper towel where you can start to see the yellow. It kind of stains it yellow, but it's not like it's coming off in a nice even amount, like as if you had just painted and you're cleaning your brush. So then you take the brush, get the water on it, and then you run it down where the yellow is going to be, okay, which is right between the bridges where the cannons are, right? And you just pick it up and drop it right between the cannons. You don't need to be too clean. It's going to pool up a bit and that you want that to happen. And remember, you're not going for a nice even uh, application. So you can rush through this as long as you're very careful to put it on the bridges where the yellow is going to be and only on the bridges where the yellow is going to be. 
and that's the one thing that I'm not too keen on the way the Warlord models are designed. The this bridge, you can see, it actually rises above where the cannons are, and it sh the cannon should be right in the middle of that that bridge. There shouldn't be the cannon shouldn't be drop dropping low. These shouldn't be as level. There should be a serious slope there, but it doesn't matter. Just put the yellow between the cannons. Okay, you don't have to be exact. They don't have to be even in each between each cannon. And then up in front, right between the cannon and the front segment uh, where the, the scroll work starts. Okay, So you can start to see it pool. Now here's the part you have to be patient with is you have to just let that dry. Now you can go to the other side though. Make sure you do not touch the other side. And just go through So you don't worry that it might get a little bit outside the line, so to speak, because you're going to go back over and you're going to touch up, because you have to paint the cannons black anyway, and you have to go through and paint the porthole covers uh, the same dark brown, reddish brown, uh, at least on, around the edges. On the first rate, the uh, actual gun ports you have the, are fully raised, so you have a nice large square you have to paint. But you're just going down the two, the two gun bridges. That's all you need to do. There it is. Okay, now we're going to let that dry completely. Now while it's dry, you can see there's still a lot of paint and water. It's okay, you can leave it there. You might want to maybe cover it up just to keep the water from evaporating too far. But it's good. if there's plenty of water, it won't evaporate too much by the time this dries on your ship. Once that's done drying, you can go back and look at it to see, do you need to add more? So let's let it dry and let's take a look and we'll see what we need to do after that. Wow. Um, I was honestly expecting to have to do a second coat. But let's see if you can see. Let's see. We're gonna try to zoom this in. We'll see if we can actually make. The, let's see if it comes in clear. Yeah. All right. So you can see the way the yellow has laid in there. Very, very similar to the way it would actually show up on the real ship. You know, the the open spaces uh, between the guns. That's where a lot of the paint would actually get uh, come off and get scraped off or wear off. But near the cr edges is where it's likely going to be more protected. So now we've got our black ship, our Saint Justo. From here on, it's just like doing building the rest of the ship. So you do the stern plate, you put the masts in, paint the masts any way you want, go ahead and paint the, uh, clean up the any of the black. If you've got any yellow on the parts you didn't want yellow, you can just go over them with black real quick, quick clean it up. Do the tops of the edges of the gun ports in that dark red brown and you're good to go. You will have one of the, well in this case, the San Justo, one of the black ships of the Spanish fleet. Now if you want, you can go to get the Spanish first rate and do just what I did with it and paint it as the Santa Ana. Again, black ship using the same exact technique. So I hope this has actually been very revealing to you, uh, very educational, and maybe even inspirational. So when you'll see there, we'll be doing some more uh, battle reports for Black Seas, you're going to see the San Justo in all of its black ship glory. All right. Thanks a lot for joining me, guys. I know this is a little long video, but hopefully it gives you some ideas for how you can add some variety to your existing Spanish fleet. Thanks a lot for uh, staying with me. Share, like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Um,